Hey, how's it going guys? Blue Tempest here and welcome back to another video. So today I have the day off and I knew I wanted to make a video, but honestly, I'm just so indecisive today. I really did not know what kind of video to make. I kind of have ran out of ideas. Now I do have some videos that I do want to make, but I'm just not ready to, you know, make those videos. They need a little bit more preparation. So yeah, I was just kind of conflicted on what video to make today. So I said, you know what? Let me just go ahead and share some amazing manga recommendations. Some manga that I have been enjoying a lot lately. And if you guys have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to know what kind of videos you guys would love to see from me. And it is definitely going to help me out with coming up with ideas for videos. So yeah, let me know down in the comments. But yes, I'm going to be talking about three manga series in this video. So hopefully you guys can get a good manga recommendation out of this. These are three series that, as I said, I have been absolutely loving as of late. But before we get into these three manga series, I do want to say if you enjoy this video, then make sure to leave a like and also to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also, make sure to follow me on all of my social media accounts, which are going to be listed down below in the description. You may get to see a little bit of a sneak peek of what manga I've been reading and enjoying over on Instagram and Twitter as well as my anime list which is also going to be linked down below. So like I said follow me on those platforms. But yeah let's start off this video with talking about a series that has only one volume out as of right now and it was one of the best volume ones that I have read recently and that series is going to be Kowloon Generic Romance. Now this is a series by Jun Mayuzaki. This is the same mangaka for After the Rain which is a series that I have heard some mixed things about but after reading this first volume I honestly may check that series out at some point because this was a fantastic read. Now from the title as you can see this is labeled as a generic romance but it is everything but generic in my opinion. Now I have heard a lot of praise for this series as of late because of this first volume recently releasing in English and I know that some people also have not really enjoyed this uh, first volume. So I would really recommend this to anyone who is into romance series, who is into more of like the slice of life aspect when it comes to, you know, romance. For the majority of this volume, it's just about this girl right here. And she works at this like real estate agency and she starts having feelings for her coworker. And the coworker, I absolutely love that character. He comes across as kind of a douchebag at first, but the more you read, the more lovable he gets. He kind of has like a very wacky personality, which I do find enjoyable. And one thing that I really do love about the series is just how cinematic it is. This feels like you're watching a movie in a way with how certain panels are presented. You know, the mangaka really does a great job with the artwork here, showcasing, you know, just very mundane and, you know, generic things going on in the series but with such a flair that makes it so interesting. We also have a very unique setting in this manga which I really do appreciate because you know while at its core it is kind of a romance slice of life it is set in a very very unique environment and that is the Kowloon walled city which was a actual place in real life i encourage you guys to do some research into that if you do enjoy this manga but it's basically this very compact city in china and what it seems is that this series takes place in the distant future in a alternate reality where Kowloon still exists because in real life that city doesn't exist anymore. But yeah, there's just a very nostalgic feeling to reading this manga, which I absolutely love. They do talk about that in this series. 
and there is a little bit of a twist at the end where you don't really know what's going on and there is a mystery aspect when it comes to just the romance, the setting, and everything. I think it's done absolutely wonderfully, and I cannot wait for volume two to be released. The next series I do want to recommend to you guys is one that I read recently while I was on vacation. I did binge this entire series from beginning to end, and this one is another really good one to recommend to you guys because it is a very short series. There's only five volumes. So I can easily recommend this to really anybody who seems interested into the series because it's not a big commitment. It's only five volumes. So if you want to read it physically, I'm pretty sure it is readily available or at the very least, I know that it's not out of print or anything like that. And also this series is available to read in its entirety on the Shonen Jump app. So again, a very easy recommendation and that series is going to be Astra Lost in Space. Now this is a series by Kenta Shinohara. He is the mangaka behind Witch Watch, which is currently serializing in Weekly Shonen Jump. That is a series that I read a few chapters of a while ago and I, you know, did enjoy what I read of it. It's kind of really just a slice of life. Uh, comedy series with just very wholesome vibes and you get those wholesome vibes in Astra Lost in Space which I really do like. Now this is a science fiction story with a lot of very strong sci-fi elements to it. Obviously this is set in space and you know there are different planets that these characters end up at. I don't want to go into a lot of spoilers but a lot of people do compare this to like among us because it basically follows this group of students who go to this planet for like a school trip and they kind of get into a situation where they are literally lost in space and it's kind of revealed that there may be an imposter among them <sighs> but yeah if you're looking for a very action-packed very mystery filled series. You know, there is some of that in here, but it really isn't the focus. The focus for the series is just the characters. So if you really like a wholesome story that focuses more on the characters rather than all of the, you know, sci-fi elements, rather than the action and all of that, then this series is for you. There also is some, you know, comedy in there. Kenta Shinohara is really a master when it comes to just different gags in manga and I did enjoy that aspect of this series. I do want to say however that there are a lot of twists and turns. Like I said this at its core you know while it is mostly slice of life focused it still is a science fiction story. So there are twists, there are some really cool aspects to the series that I was not expecting at all. And all in all, you know, I, I can't really say much about this without going into spoilers. And I don't know if what I, you know, said about this series really does it justice, but if it sounds interesting to you, I highly recommend you checking this series out. Like I said, it's not a big commitment and it's just a really good time. It's a really well-written, well-crafted story. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about Astra Lost in Space. All right, and the last series that I do want to recommend to you guys in this video is a series that I watched the anime for quite a while ago, and I absolutely loved the anime. I loved it so much that I decided to buy the entirety of the manga. Now, this is a series that is still ongoing. There are 11 volumes, but from what I understand, the series will be ending pretty soon. And that series is Land of the Lustrous. Now, I did finally read all of the manga, at least put out physically so far, and this is genuinely one of my favorite series of all time. Now, this is a series that I really, really encourage you guys to check out, but I can understand that this might not be for everybody. This series features a very, very beautiful art style, which is one of the series biggest strengths but at the same time it's one of its weaknesses because as a series that features a lot of action this art style isn't quite suited to action as much 
because it can be very confusing. You might not even know what's going on on the page. So if you guys are interested in the series, I do honestly recommend watching the anime. And I may be biased because that's kind of the route that I took with this series. I did watch the anime first and then read the manga, but it did kind of help me, you know, grasp what was actually going on in the series. It kind of helped me understand the art more. It's really interesting, but the anime is an amazing adaptation. It does a great job. Another thing to note about this series is that a lot of the characters look the same, and I'll explain why in a second. The character designs, they look very similar, and really the only differentiation between a lot of them is just their hairstyles, which in the anime is kind of remedied because all of them have very different hair colors that kind of helps you distinguish each character from another. But in the manga, because it is black and white, you don't get much of that. But what I do like is at the beginning of each volume, we do get kind of like a character introduction where it does, you know, show you all of the relevant characters in a colored page, which is pretty nice. But I can still see that being an aspect that can confuse a lot of readers. So yes, it did help me understand all this series a lot more with watching the anime. But with all that out of the way, let me tell you guys about Land of the Lustrous. Now this is a series that follows our main protagonist, Foss, and they are pretty much a anthropomorphic gemstone and all of the characters are different gemstones. So you have characters like Diamond and Amethyst and Jade and all of these different, you know, real life gemstones, but they are these humanoid characters based off of these gemstones, which is really interesting. And there's a lot of mystery involved in the series with just the world and how these gemstones came to be. And let me tell you, the world building is incredible in this series. If there's something I really love about manga is just the different worlds that you can get transported to and Land of the Lustrous is no exception to that. I would say that the world building is up there with the likes of Made in Abyss with just how unique the world is and you will not find another manga like Land of the Lustrous. This is such a unique fantasy story with some of the best character writing that I have ever read in manga. Foss is a character that in volume 11 is completely different from how they are in volume 1. The amount of character development that Foss gets is absolutely incredible and the places that the story goes to is just absolutely insane. Now if you have watched the anime before and haven't read the manga, I highly encourage you to read the manga. Now, there isn't really an easy place where you could, you know, pick up from because the last few episodes of the anime do switch the order of things around a bit. I don't think it's a bad thing, but I do think that you should start from volume one of the manga and just read the whole thing through just to kind of get yourself into the vibe of the manga itself. But once you get to the stuff that happens past the anime, it just gets absolutely mind blowing. The revelations that you get in this story are insane. This is one of my favorite series of all time. I can definitely already say that. And once this series concludes, I will be making a video on it. This is a series that I was, you know, toying with the idea of making its own video for, but I think since it's so close to ending, I'm just gonna wait till the story ends to do a review on it. And I wanna make sure I get that video right because I'm definitely gonna have to write a script for it. I'm definitely going to want to really focus in and hone in on just my thoughts and feelings of the series. And also I do want to spend some more time on the editing for that. So definitely look forward to that whenever Land of the Lustrous ends. But as of right now, I do just want to recommend this series to you guys because it is absolutely incredible. And I do want to say that the first few volumes can be a little slow, but once you get into it, you're really gonna get into it. And that's why I might honestly recommend the anime a little bit more to newcomers to the series because it's a lot easier for you to get into. But at the end of the day, if you get into the manga first, then that is also a valid option because I absolutely love both. So yes, Land of the Lustrous, a incredible manga series, one of my favorites, and I just cannot wait to see how this manga will end. All right, and with that guys, that does it for this video. Hopefully you guys got a recommendation out of at least one of these three manga series that I talked about today. Like I said earlier in the video, if you have any ideas for more manga videos, 
let me know down in the comments. But with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.